guys, welcome to Pancreas Pals. Emily here. And Miriam. And this week's incredibly special guest is Nicole Buchanan at Nicole K. Buchanan. I think there's some dots in there, periods, whatever you want to say, we'll link to it. From Instagram, a, an incredibly talented digital creator. I can't speak. Welcome, Nicole. Hi, I'm so glad you guys have really, me today. Really glad to have you. I know. Um, thanks for bearing with some technical difficulties guys i'm not perfect no one's perfect happy sunday um we are so <laughs> excited because i've miriam and i love digital creators mm-hmm. on the whole but i if, if anyone's heard any of our episodes with mike natter we have a few we love the intersection of art and diabetes mm-hmm. and while mike is dope with the old-fashioned pen and paper and I'm sure Nicole is too, but I love the whole digital aspect of creating. And I think that I am a obsessed with your really realistic drawings. Yes. Um, I want to get into all of this. I don't know why I'm setting this up, but first I'm going to get into your diagnosis story because yes. that's, that's how our episodes go. <laughs> so let's, yes. uh, let's dive right into the fact that you have type 1 diabetes. Tell us yes. more. Yes, I do. I do. So should I, do I just yeah. start uh, from the I very mean, beginning? I mean, you can tell us the time of day, but like do do whatever feels right <laughs> for your story. It can be as long or as short as right. you like. Um, okay. So I was diagnosed at four and a half. So I've had it for mm-hmm. 23 years now. Um, it basically started where my parents thought I had a bladder infection. I had just had the flu. So there was a few things kind of like all tied together that they were like, all right, we should probably take her to the doctor. Like I had been wetting the bed, excessive thirst, um, you know, just the typical signs of something being wrong. Um, so when they took me into the pediatrician that day, the first thing the doctor said was, I think she might be diabetic. So they, you know, sent me down to the lab, ran tests, got a call that night. She's type one diabetic. I think I spent like a week in the hospital, Um, At the time, it was just syringes and vials and poking your finger. Um, That was pretty much the extent of it. I don't necessarily remember, like, everything that went on during that time (laughs) Mm -hmm. because I was so young. (laughs) I remember, like, sitting in the hospital bed and, like, my family coming to visit and, like, everybody being, like, really sad and me being, like, why is everybody so sad? Um, But, yeah, I mean, I've pretty much just grown up with it. A lot has changed since I was first diagnosed. Um, that's pretty much the extent of mm-hmm. the diagnosis story. We love story. a straightforward diagnosis yeah. story. It's so yeah. interesting. <laughs> it wasn't that you know, easy. <laughs> the reason why even the most basic of diagnosis diagnoses are so interesting to me because everyone's, no matter how straightforward each one is, they're so different. Um, like you spending a week in the hospital right. versus someone, you know, around the same age being sent home and coming back the next day. We've heard a whole thing like right a, so many and I think it yeah stories. it also depends like on the time frame because we were diagnosed around the same time I was about 25 years ago and so I think that was just the yeah. standard of care for pediatrics at least at that time like if you're diagnosed with diabetes right. they right. kept you for a week and I think a lot of that is because right obviously they're regulating you but there also was a lot of education like I remember exactly, and you probably yeah. similar as you. Like I don't remember a lot, but I have these vague images of like right. I think they were educating the parents a lot of the time. They were right. the child life specialists would come and like show you like on a doll, like oh poke here, you know. Right. Yeah. Jerry, yeah. I do. I do doll. briefly remember yeah, the doll. Yeah. So I think I it was, was so just jealous. This... I never got the doll, guys. I never yeah. got the doll. You were. You're. You're too. Yeah. You should have asked for that. I know. As a t- <laughs> so. Um, head back to season one episode one because I love to relate everything Mm -hmm. back to myself um it's a character flaw for (laughs) sure I'd like to say I'm working on it but honestly it's taken a pause whatever this is real this is me but um I Miriam and I often discuss this Mm -hmm. and anyone who's an avid listener is probably rolling their eyes right now and I don't blame you I was diagnosed uh god I feel old now seven we're around the same age Nicole so we're not old we're effervescent um I was diagnosed yes I'm like I hate you both I'm older than you (laughs) we're all we're all young or as my mother would say spring chickens anywho um I was diagnosed around seven years ago um yeah seven years ago basically to the month I think uh, and as an, ad- I was diagnosed when I was 20. So as an adult, um, I didn't really get any of the same 
uh, cushion kind of care, if you will. Right, not right. that I necessarily, I'm so glad and grateful I was not in the hospital for a week. Um, but also I was kind of just like sat down and been like, and was told after a year of the wrong diagnosis, hey, instead of like, hey, I was wrong. It's like, hey, you have diabetes. You're going into diabetic ketoacidosis. You need to give yourself a shot right now before I can let you leave. And then you'll, you know, then we'll see you back here in three months. And this is well, this is what you're right. going to do. You can have an insulin pump if you want. And I was like, huh? wait, what? <laughs> like all within the same yeah, breath. That's yeah, crazy. it was also like really poor bedside manner. And honestly, looking back, yeah, there's a whole episode on this. But moving on, oh, yeah, I'm it's sure. wild. But I, Miriam and I always debate if what's better, if I, you know, having 20, well, technically like 18 and a half years of, with a working pancreas and, you know, knowing life without pricks and needles and things mm-hmm. like that versus having your parents help care for you and having um not knowing any a, different yeah, yeah gliding into yeah, it that's instead how I of feel. crashing into it. I always say that I like crash into diabetes but when you're little it's like a little bit different it's mm-hmm. you know like exactly, it's all I know we were joking about not knowing yeah. not remembering much because you were four and a half and it's like yeah could you imagine if you vividly, re- <laughs> it's yeah, like if you vividly remembered all of that <laughs> but at the same time it's just it's so interesting and I think it changes our outlooks on how we manage it and how we we kind of care for it, mm-hmm. which leads me to your venture, which is digital creation, creating. That sounds like you're God. Maybe you are. I don't know. But um, <laughs> creating art digitally. Yeah. Let's yes. talk about how you got into that and maybe a little bit about how diabetes plays a role in that. Yeah. Um, it kind of all started when I had my son um, five years ago in August and I had been working full time and just decided staying home with him was the better option all around. So when I started staying home with him, I just felt like very Mm -hmm. alone, honestly. Like it was just me and a baby all day. And I didn't feel like I had that connection like I did when I was working and like being around adults all the time. So I started an Instagram basically to connect with like other moms and other people and just like have adult conversation throughout the day. I love Instagram. Yeah. So it, it kind of just started as that, and I met, ended up meeting uh, a lot of people that weren't even, like, di- diabetics or anything. And then I found a girl through a hashtag, like, I think it was, like, hashtag mm-hmm. Indianapolis or something. <laughs> and she had posted that she had just gotten a new pump. And I was like, why have I never thought of the fact that there's other people in Indianapolis that have diabetes? Mm-hmm. So I ended up connecting with her, and she connected me with like a whole group on Instagram of girls all in my area and that was when I kind of was like okay there's a huge community Mm -hmm. on here uh full of diabetics and that's when I started connecting with more people with diabetes and started really putting out content that was focused around diabetes and side note when I was home with my son I also started drawing just something to do on the side something to like get my mind off of things um it's just yeah just something to do that wasn't being a mom so um when I started doing that and kind of tied that together with diabetes and started posting about quoting like you know Mm -hmm. relatable quotes and stuff that people felt like they could really like connect with um that's when I realized like okay this is something I should really be doing because people are messaging me every day like this is genuinely helping me like you make me feel not so alone um you know just reading your quotes every day really like actually puts a smile on my face so thank you for what you're doing and I was like okay so I'm I'm definitely gonna like dive deep into this and like really get into it because it's making a difference in people's days and that's genuinely my main goal every day when I get on Instagram if I can make one person smile or make one person feel like they're not so alone in this disease then I'm doing yeah. something right yeah and that's you're doing Grace Pals motto too that's you know yeah. from one yes. creator to another <laughs> different medium but right. um that's right. what Miriam and I go for all the time. Yeah, and for our listeners who obviously are listening, and you might not be wa- looking at her Instagram right now, but I'll, I'll kind of explain it. It's these lovely, really great illustrations, so aesthetically pleasing. Like sl- I'm like showing sliding through the grid right now is just so <laughs> nice. And my boyfriend, who does not comment on these Thank things, you. <laughs> literally, I was like, Matt, I like to sh- show him who I'm mm-hmm. interviewing that weekend. And he's like, oh, my God, I love her grit. Like, he doesn't even have an Instagram, just so you know. He was like, oh, I love her colors. And I was like, oh, my God, thank you. you. (laughs) 
but it's great. <laughs> Tell him and I appreciate it. Not only the illustrations, and it's illustrations of like women, primarily women with their gadgets on, you know, their diabetes tech on them, which we don't really right. get to see very often in like in, in right. our culture. And it's just really exciting to see these images of real women with real gadgets on and the quotes that you have associated with them. Like there's some humor in there. There's inspiration. There's like, right. you know, the, the <laughs> self-deprecating we all do. It's just like really, really right. relatable. Um, and it puts a smile on your face when you see it. And so I think it's really awesome. You, For you, you, I imagine it must be like cathartic for you to be able to kind of have oh, this 100%. outlet. But then for the people viewing it, yeah. it has the same effect. And so... Major I've shared quite a few of those. And like, yeah. You know, like, well, well, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Our, our, our small following. <laughs> uh, but I, I, my question to you is, do you remember, well, I have a few questions. First, do you remember your first drawing and the first one where you used a quote of what the person kind of like, I'm assuming people submit their quotes to you. And I know some of them. For yeah, the most part, yeah. So they're choosing what's important to them and you're transforming right. it and giving them do they give you a picture to work off of that they also want to be reimagined okay yes so that's so interesting that people I love because I love reading them and sometimes I'm like oh hell yeah, yeah. sometimes I'm like oh I didn't think of that but it's really interesting right. to that that's what people want to that's every person choosing what they want to be depicted mm -hmm. I guess is what right. I'm trying to say in a very <laughs> way um so do you remember <laughs> the first person that you posted I do. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head her exact handle, but um, she's I – th oh, it's – no, it's get fit KC, like K get fit underscore KC, I believe. Good memory. She's a runner. <laughs> yeah. This was a while ago too, so – but it was a picture of her holding all of her supplies in her hands. So she had like a minute. her her <laughs> it did. Well, it did. <laughs> Especially since it was my first one, I was like, okay, this is going to take a while, but – it's fine. I don't mind it. Um, it. But she had like her syringes, her pens, her um, like vials, meter, um, insulin, yeah, meter, um, alcohol swabs, Everything. like all of that stuff, just like in her hands. And the quote was like, "Gosh, what was it? Um, just because you carry it well doesn't mean it isn't heavy, or something along those one. lines." Yeah. And yeah, that was one that like I got so many messages that people were like, "That's." exactly how I feel it, every single day that's exactly how I feel so that's when I was like this is this is gonna help people this is really gonna make people feel not alone I so love it. and I I just yeah. I mean first of all like soft sobs because we all anyone who has diabetes no matter how much access you have to amazing technology that's supposed to lighten the load you still have the load <laughs> like it's, yeah you know, yeah. my Dexcom's amazing, but I still, and this is not me complaining about having access, like, this, it's amazing that I'm able to afford and wear a Dexcom, but it's still another piece to carry, so. Um, exactly, yeah. I feel like there's a lot of talk, especially in the diabe diabetic online community, of accessibility and affordability, and I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about the everyday load and burden that we often feel yeah. with diabetes, and I just feel like looking at the pictures, knowing that you were home with your little kiddo, mm -hmm. you know, new mom, just trying to, I mean, I, especially during, yeah, connect, but especially during quarantine times, like, <laughs> yeah. I can't, I, I want to connect with adults, too, and it's just me and Matt, right. and my boyfriend <laughs> and I sitting here staring at each other, and I'm like, do not say another word to right. me, <laughs> like, he's like, I love yeah, you, I'm no, like, I feel that. you love me one more time, I'm gonna kill you, <laughs> like, I'm fine, everything's yeah. fine, um, but I just yep. picture, like, and I, I draw, too, but not nearly as well as you. Um, I draw more as a passion project, like for fun doodles of my sister's dog. Now a word from one of our sponsors. Hey, Miriam, have you heard of the diabetes app? I feel like I've heard about it, but I don't know what it is. It's this super cool app that allows you to connect with other diabetics based on type of diabetes in your age. It has tons of resources for us pancreatically impaired pals and can even help you find healthcare professionals. Wait, that sounds amazing. And it's all one app? Yep, go to the App Store and download it for free. I already signed up and you should too. Ooh, downloading it now. Now, back to the episode. So it's, um, yeah. <laughs> these these images are insanely realistic and mm -hmm. I love that there's like, you definitely have a style and I love that that mm -hmm. comes through mm -hmm. in, in a realistic way, not just like a, it's hard to explain 
I will post some links to, to some of Nicole's favorites, maybe if she'll, uh, I'm sure that's like choosing a baby, but maybe we'll, we'll squeeze some out of her <laughs> to post along with us. Um, I have a few that I really and, like, so and I, I, mean, I, I want to yeah. ask, because you mentioned you really started drawing when you were home with your son. And so I, ha- I mean, you're really talented. Yeah. So I imagine you must well, have thank drawn you. and do, like, you must have been an arty kid artsy kid is that right or is this like yeah I I was always more of like a artsy like doodle color person than I was like let's do math I'm looking I'm like you can't just like decide I'm gonna start drawing like in my 20s and be this good like you you're kind of born with some of this talent for sure yeah I I should have said I started digitally drawing back you know whatever five years ago what's that like can you tell us a bit not even the diabetes aspect necessarily but you know, what are, what are the tools you use for digital creation? Um, I literally just use my iPad and Apple pencil and an app called Procreate. Amazing. Procreate. It sounds like yes. that's a great, great yes. app. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it is amazing. Like if you Google that, you know, a lot of people might not like what they find, but make sure space. that's true. <laughs> Yeah, Procreate there you go. app is probably the better choice. Um, but yeah, no, I love my Apple pen, pencil, whatever you call it. It's amazing. Um, Honestly, one of my favorite Hanukkah gifts to myself. Uh, they're not, hey, I mean, yeah. they're expensive and not any Apple product kind of hurts yeah. your heart a little bit, but I say for my MacBook it definitely does. <laughs> and my iPhone, um, God, I'm, I'm the yeah. epitome of privilege. I got to stop talking, but I, you know, it's, it, I think mine was like 125 because I bought an older model and yeah. you know, that's like just for never ending hobbies. Coffees. Yeah. Yeah. In New York, that's like yeah. 10 coffees. <laughs> Anywhere else in the country, that's like. 30 coffees yeah a lot (laughs) Um, yeah but yeah I love that and um, I'll definitely ask you on the side how the hell you've managed to figure out how to charge the damn apple pencil because that's like a whole other thing I know how to charge it but it doesn't stay charged it's like a whole thing I'm fine it's fine um but so when you're when you're creating these things and you're you're just getting dms right people requesting and are you doing yeah specifically people with chronic illnesses or is it I guess I'm just trying like I obviously this is a type one account, but Mm -hmm. I'm wondering how you come up with like how how you're focusing on that, because I'm assuming you're getting inundated with requests. Yeah, I pretty much just um, do requests from people Mm -hmm. who have diabetes because those are the people that reach out to me. I have had a few um, like parents that have reached out to me and asked me just to draw an illustration Mm -hmm. of like their kids um, or like a family picture that isn't necessarily anything diabetes related, but probably 98% of what I do is direct requests from people Mm -hmm. with diabetes, not necessarily type one. I shouldn't say that because there's a million other kinds, but for the most part, diabetes related. That's so cool. And I love that you can see, you know, people wearing a Libre, people wearing an Omnipod, Mm -hmm. people wearing a Dexcom, and it just really shows you, and like people doing injections and yeah but I love that there's like a little spider-man like a kid Mm -hmm. dressed up as spider-man and then you know like two slides later there's like just a graphic of a low what it's like to feel low and I'm like yes literally everything you wrote about that (laughs) emotional like Mm -hmm. I swear to god no matter how long you've had diabetes and how long people have known you with diabetes when you have a low it's always a surprise at least Mm -hmm. in my experience what's it gonna be like this way Mm -hmm. yeah so it's like yeah sometimes I'm like seriously do not scratch my back while I have like my boyfriend god I love Matt oh I know yeah too much time together yeah I'm like can you just not can you just let me be for like a minute and he's like oh my god I'll run I'll run down the block could get you anything you need like blah, blah. I'm like just stay there just stay there fine. don't speak to um, me. <laughs> yeah just yeah like, don't scratch my back I'm fine uh but I just I don't know I think that the representation also it's not all oh this is gonna I can't say no but it's showing the diversity within the community yeah, I think you do a go. really nice job yeah. of that um and it's not yeah it's not just the same old you know T1D influencer on Instagram it's like yeah that's it's, yeah. Story, it's the nice <laughs> It's the nice, like, summary of our community. And, again, it's primarily female because I imagine those are the people who are reaching out to you. It's exactly. mostly That's girls, yeah. reaching out to you. But within that, within that you know, female-oriented community, it, there's so much diversity. And, again, I, I know I'm just, like, blubbering on, but I really enjoy just, like, going up and down your grid. Um, it's I just, love the wedding bring, dress Yeah, one. it makes me smile. It reminds mm-hmm. me of Miriam's wedding. That's good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I just like, LOL. Yeah. So, um, 
Anywho, I feel like I had another question, but I'm just getting lost in your grid. My boyfriend was right. It really does have a beautiful aesthetic. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, thanks. (laughs) So I guess that leads me to, does your son know about diabetes? Like, does he know that you do these drawings too? Is it, I don't know, kids are, he's only four and a half, right? Yeah. Um, He, he's definitely gotten more observant recently. He will usually say like, Mm -hmm. who are you drawing today? Or why are you drawing that today? Or who is that? Um. And I'll usually just say, oh, this is a girl that I talked to that wants to have a picture of her with her diabetes things. Or this is another person that has diabetes like mommy. And he'll be like, oh, okay, great. And like, move on with his day. Classic kid. <laughs> um, and then as far, yeah, as far as just like diabetes in general, um, I don't think he necessarily like understands what diabetes itself is. But he does understand like when my uh, Libre reader goes off, he'll say, mommy, your diabetes is calling <laughs> or, you know, he'll be like, mommy, do you need juice? And I'm like, oh, probably not. Probably just need insulin because it's probably high. <laughs> but, you know, um, he knows that extent. Um, he knows uh, like my pump gives mm-hmm. me medicine after I eat. Um, just like the most basic things. I have kind of tried to like slowly introduce him to diabetes rather than like yeah. dumping it all on him at once because he would either not listen at all or it would just go in one ear and out the other. Classic so four-year-olds. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. Our last <laughs> episode. I feel like this is a culmination yeah. of like a million of our episodes. So our last episode that we just put out was with Bethany Braun Silva, who's a parenting editor, but also a type one diabetic who has two sons, yeah. one of which is around your son's age and mm-hmm. one is older. And she talks about the differences in how they view her diabetes. Mm-hmm. And it's really interesting, oh, yeah. um, the four-year-old versus the the eight-year-old that she has. I think he was eight. Yeah, I think He's so. older. Um, and anyways, wild episode. Loved it. Love her. Yeah, but, but it, it is. Um, oh, I'm sure. I always find it really interesting to see how people talk about it with their kids um, and how their kids comprehend it. Because I, I remember growing up. Right. Um, I didn't. At my, I went to diabetes camp, so I knew other di- you know, type 1 diabetics. Another thing age, I didn't get. But <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Love diabetes camp. But I remember there was a couple times I would meet kids who were like, oh, my mom has type 1 diabetes or my dad has type 1 diabetes. I'd hear that, you know, pretty often. And for me, it was always such a relief. It's like, oh, okay, this is like a like an ally. Like they get it. They know what this entails. But then I sometimes I'd talk to them and they'd be like, oh, they like wouldn't know what I was talking about. So it was really interesting to see like, right. Some parents, I think, are very open with it, and it just becomes, like, their kids don't know any different. It's just, like, what it, it is what it is. And I right. think some parents, at least, you know, 25 years ago, were much more secretive about it, maybe, and didn't put right. their kids in. And yeah. It's just, you know, not that one, is, it's not right or wrong, but I just find it really interesting to see, as type ones, there's more of us who are going to, you know, have children, and it's, it's just interesting to right. see how they'll absorb that and... How right. they'll get talked to about it. For me, I, yeah, for me, I I would just prefer that he knows what it is in case for some reason I was so for low sure. that I dropped mm-hmm. to the ground and passed out. And for him to know, like, okay, mommy needs juice <laughs> or, you know, I need to call daddy Don't or just something. Run away from so mommy. that Help her. I'm not just laying there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he at least has some idea of, like, what the right. heck is going on with me. So that's, yeah. yeah. I feel like that child or not in any situation that's always yes. key yeah um but obviously <laughs> I am nowhere near having any children at this point in my life so lol but I do think that um having an open conversation mm-hmm. without scaring people is always the most difficult mm-hmm. part yeah in in relaying it diabetes is, yeah. to anyone and yeah. I think that that's something that your Instagram does so well is it makes it accessible and mm-hmm. it makes like showing a picture kind of like it's a snapshot of all mm-hmm. these people it, where they are in right. their diabetic journey, um, no matter what kind they have. And it's just, it's wild. I feel like half of these, like, do you ever just feel like you'll look back from at one of your first ones and be like, oh my God, I can't believe, you know, they didn't know about, Dexcom wasn't available then. Or, you know, yeah. like, I guess mm-hmm. probably right. not Dexcom because these have been around for a long time. But I often think of Instagram as like a scrapbook, mm-hmm. of, a digital scrapbook yeah. of the future. And this is just a beautiful scrapbook yeah. of all of your amazing drawings. Mm-hmm. And I could totally see this being a book in the future. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I've thought about like how I could do that. I'm like, I'd have to get from permission from every single person. But everyone would be like, like no. no. Oh God, of course. Legally, I'm not sure you <laughs> I know, need to, I unless they're celebrities because you created the drawing. I guess that's but, not true. Um, yeah, it would be nice to ask people. <laughs> if anyone, yeah. I'm going to get like a whole bunch of hate messages from that. Sorry, guys. I took a communications law law class once like seven years ago in college. I think I know everything. <laughs> 
<laughs> so don't quote me on that, anyone listening. But uh, yeah, so more love. Everyone, go check out Nicole on Instagram at Nicole dot k stop buchanan mm-hmm. dot period whatever you want to call it <laughs> we will no link commas that for spelling mm-hmm. yeah but uh, <laughs> I'm surprised you announced it or pronounced it right like literally no one ever says buchanan oh, really? right oh. oh my god I think I yes. know it's because I know a few other buchanans mm-hmm. and by a okay, few I think that I does mean help from college and yeah it's it's like a how do people pronounce it buchanan Bucket, yeah. <sighs> Buchanan, Buchanan, oh, Buchanan maybe. Uh, Buckman. That's just wrong. Oh, Buckman. Oh. I know. It's like they're just like huh. making yeah. it wrong. Yeah. Names are yeah. hard, but where there's I, a will, there's a way. <laughs> I know. When I, when I graduated high school and I was walking across the stage, they called me Nicole oh. Buckman. So that, that stuck with me for life. <laughs> I know. I was like, I've only, you, were, you know, contributed yeah, my entire life to this moment, but it's oh fine. Oh, gosh. That's so <laughs> sad. Well, in an uplifting question okay. that you might not have an answer to, what do you think is next for for you for your Instagram? I'm assuming you're are most of these free drawings that you're doing. Um, I started out doing it free until I got to a point where it's there was much. just so many yeah. requests that I just I, I had to start yeah. charging so I, I started charging it's $25 mm-hmm. per illustration That's and so I hate to have to do that but I just like I would literally be oh drawing 24 no, 7 okay. never yeah. sleeping or eating if I did it do not so. apologize we are <laughs> big proponents of knowing your worth <laughs> which is more than $25 <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let me clarify but every creator deserves monetary compensation this is your time and your time is worth something you are a mom you right, are right. a human being this is breathing true. like <laughs> you, you're worth your work is worth something so that's uh that's something i wanted to clarify so people like dming nicole after yeah. this like don't you know don't take advantage yes it's, it's a part of a support a bigger thing. support the artist mm-hmm. <laughs> well thank I you i feel like we should definitely do like a cross-branded something for um like a paid cross. Now this is awkward. Now anyone listening is like, oh my god, is Emily trying to get something for free? Um, no, but like some some type yeah. of giveaway or something like, that would be cool. Yeah, a cross yeah, branded definitely. Peter's pals, ex sure. Nicole, the third pal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just anyone who's listening who hasn't checked out Nicole definitely head to her Instagram again. That's Nicole dot K dot Buchanan. My middle name starts with yes. a K too. Um, so there's that. I'm assuming Kay's your middle name. Now I just made it awkward. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's oh, Caitlin. Kate. Holla. So close. So close. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do our little wrap up, I think. Is that cool with everyone? Do you have any yeah. last minute thoughts, yeah. Nicole? I'm going to let you get back to your uh, <sighs> Sunday. I think that was it. I think you guys covered just about everything. And Tried to make it. Yeah. Tried to make it flow. And any <laughs> listeners who like want an illustration of themselves, if you have like a cool quote and, and whatnot, reach out to Nicole on Instagram. Yes. Yes, definitely. Not only am I done spelling out your name, but we will definitely link to it um, (laughs) on all of our platforms. So head to our Instagram at pancreas underscore pals, our Facebook at pancreas pals PP. Slide into our DMs on both. Either we love hearing from you guys. Head to our email to send us a note about what you want to hear or any follow up questions. We love to connect people pancreaspals123 at gmail.com our website is pancreaspals.com you can listen to us however you just found us because lol you're listening but we're also available on Acast, spotify alexa all the things get at us Um, we actually realized miriam and i were texting earlier this week we have surpassed like 120,000 downloads so we're we're excited about that we're um, that's awesome we're gonna do some exciting things for 150,000 i think we're planning a big Hurrah. Okay. We haven't decided what the hurrah is. Yeah, yet, don't don't get everyone excited. There's gonna be a giveaway. Um we definitely have some some really loyal listeners that yeah. I think deserve a plaque if nothing less. Um, <laughs> so thanks everyone for sticking with us these past few years. We're so excited to continue creating more content for you guys and we have exciting partnerships coming up and all the usual fun and games. So yes. thanks for being a part of this episode, Nicole. We hope to have you back again yes, soon and of course loved chatting thanks for taking the time out of your busy weekend for us of course thanks for having thanks me thanks for being here all right all guys right, have guys. a great rest of your week bye bye, bye.